Welcome, everybody. My name is Cindy Brown, and I am the Director of Public Information here at Crowder College. Dr. Jennifer Methman is unable to be with us here today, so she um, said to send her apologies that she's not able to be here. She had this all planned out, almost finished, and then she said, I need to be gone. So she asked a few of us to take her place. So here we are today. We're here today, though, to pay tribute to an important icon in the Camp Crowder, as well as Crowder College history, Mr. Mort Walker, creator of Beetle Bailey. So we have several people today who will actually talk about their experiences, some of the history and different things, um, different dealings they had with Mr. Walker. And over to my left or to your right, you will see some tables set up. Once we're finished with the program, you're welcome to peruse those tables and ask questions of the people that will be at the tables. So we have everything from um, the conservation office gave us stuff about the Bicentennial Trail, the Mort Walker Trail in the Bicentennial Park. Um, Boy Scout Troop 34 will be here representing some of the things they do. Um, Ms. Kay Hively, author of Red Hot and Dusty, who you'll hear speak in just a little bit. Um, Crowder employees who've had interactions. So we have a couple of employees who've had some interactions with him as well as the one that will be speaking today. Um, our rare books um, collection in the library, Ms. Robin is over there and we'll, we'll do a little dedication of some of these books we've purchased. As well as our Longwell Museum and some of the things that we have in the museum that pertain to the time when Mr. Walker was here at Camp Crowder. So without further ado, I know we all have busy, busy schedules and things to do. I'm gonna introduce our first speaker. That'll be Mr. Keith Zeromsky. Keith is our Social Sciences Division Chair, and he also does something with this Title III grant he's been working a lot on, but today he's putting on his history hat, working for us as, as the Social Science Division Chair. So welcome, Keith, to the podium. Thank you for being here today. And I say today specifically for a reason. It is very fitting that we are here on April 12th. Why? Today is the 76th anniversary of the de dedication of Camp Crowder on April 12th, 1942, very close to this very spot. It was here at Camp Crowder that for several weeks after being drafted in 1943, Mr. Mort Walker served several weeks of training with radios. Now, he famously said he didn't really know why because he didn't know anything about radios, but it kind of gave preview to what he said, how the military kind of writes its, its own funnies in many ways and what it does. <laughs> With this, though, Mort Walker was a lifelong supporter of veterans and the armed forces, and we would be remiss at this tribute if we did not recognize the veterans among us here today. So those of you in attendance, I ask you if you served in any of our armed forces, please stand and be recognized at this time. I grew up, like many of you, reading the Sunday Funnies. I remember sitting on the floor of my kitchen, reading the Sunday paper, laying on my stomach, reading the different comics. And Beetle Bailey always stood out to me because it reminded me of my grandfather. Now, he's not here to say this, but every time I would call him and thank him on Veterans Day, he'd say, grandson, I fought like heck, but they drafted me anyway. <laughs> if that doesn't sound like something that Beetle Bailey would say, I don't know what was. But what's interesting is that despite the age differences that we may have, a comic such as this transcends generations. And many of that comes back to the connections that we have to the characters in the comic, let alone the location. One morning, Private Walker woke up to water everywhere. Their first thought, class is canceled today, like many of our students would think. But class was only canceled to take them out to the creek with sandbags that seemed like endless hours to dam the flooding waters. This gave him the inspiration to call the location Camp Swampy in the Beetle Bailey cartoons. Other characters and other people would influence him but it was his line that his military service unexpectedly gave him four years of training and experience for this comic that he would realize. What a lot of us don't stop to realize is that while Beetle Bailey may seem frozen in time, it's remained relevant. In the 1970s, it became the second 
comic strip to include an African American character. A few years following, an Asian American character. Even over the last decade and a half, Chip Gizmo, somebody with cellular devices and tablets and headsets and all sorts of things. It's something that's remained frozen in many ways with tradition, but remained relevant at the same time. Mr. Walker was able to do that with expertise while still maintaining his characters and our connections to them, transcending generations. And with that, I think we all understand why we're here today to pay tribute. At this time, I would like to invite Ms. Cindy Branscombe to the podium. She is our former director of the Crowder College Foundation who had personal interactions with Mr. Walker. Please welcome Ms. Branscombe. Well, I tell you what, I had a, an interesting opportunity to have an experience in visiting with Mr. Walker, and it's really a privilege today to, to come out and uh, tell you a little bit about that, because uh, I think it was a rare opportunity, and just by chance that I got to do that. Um, he, um, when I came here 10 years ago, I was very interested in the Crowder history and what had gone on out here at Fort Crowder. And when I moved over into the foundation just a little under five years ago, I got real interested in Mort Walker and his relationship to Camp Crowder. And so um, <clears throat> I got on the internet and uh, sent an email to his assistant, who was so kind to actually put me in contact with Mr. Walker. And so over a course of a number of weeks, I had three phone conversations with him and one of the things that struck me most about him is that he had such a young voice. He sounded so young on the phone. Um, he was almost 90 at the time. He was 89. And um, I enjoyed just visiting with him just simply because he, you know, here I knew he was almost 90 years old, but he sounded like such a young man. And the conversations with him, um, he could have been in his 20s, what he was talking about, how he talked about what he enjoyed and about his family and that sort of thing. Um, we even talked about a Crowder team going to Connecticut and doing a video interview with him, which in reflection, I wish we had done that. Uh, at the time, his wife Kathy wasn't very well and he stayed home most of the time, but he was open to um, talking about doing something like that. In the end, we didn't, but what we did do was develop this little cartoon. And that's really why I contacted him, is I asked him if he would consider uh, doing some kind of an original drawing about how we came from Camp Crowder, Fort Crowder, to Crowder College. And would you believe um, he, put, he put the initial drawing together pretty fast? and sent it to me, and he actually asked me if this is what I had in mind. And let me give him, you know, a little feedback on what I had, you know, wanted to see as a historical, kind of a historical cartoon about the history here at Crowder. So he tweaked it a little bit, and you can see him looking at it, you know. Um, and of course, this is the dorm out here now. Uh, and so, we really, I thought we would do something with it at the foundation. Really, what I was thinking as a development person is somehow this would benefit the foundation financially. <laughs> <laughs> I did never do that uh, because it just never did find the right opportunity. Uh, but I think it's more valuable than that. Uh, just that we, we got to talk to him. We got to have this made for the college and tie uh, those decades, that history, together here for our community and for our college. So it was a lot of fun getting to talk to him. Um, in, um, he turned 90 then, not too many months after I talked to him, and we sent him quite a birthday gift box of things from Crowder College. And that was fun, we got a note back from him that he appreciated that. I don't know if he used any of it or if it, wore a t-shirt from Crowder College or not, but we sent him a big birthday card with lots of signatures 
from people around the campus who wanted to sign it, and then uh, some birthday gifts. And then uh, we even, at that time, uh, some of the people who work here for the college will remember there was discussion at the time about building some additional dorms out here. And that was before we bought the uh, Rough Rider Village across the street. And one of the things that we threw around was that the student common area would be the swamp or Camp Swampy. Because uh, be people have said, why haven't we done more here at the college that had to do with Beetle Bailey and this cartoon? We've just never really applied that to uh, uh, anything here on campus. Maybe someday they will. But that was a discussion we had at the time. It was really relevant to that opportunity of getting to visit with him. But um, he was a neat man, uh, really stayed with it, I think, all the way uh, through his 94th birthday. He um, was very active and very family-oriented. And it was really a, my privilege to have gotten to get to know him just a little bit, even though it was just over the phone and not in person. So thank you. Thank you, Keith and Cindy. Um, I'd now like to welcome to the podium Mr. Rodney Bechtel. Rodney is with the Boy Scout Troop 34, and they have their own interactions, which I hope you do go over to the tables and look at in a little bit. He has some fascinating things to tell you, so Rod, here we go. Thank you. Uh, troop 34 and the Boy Scouts got active with uh, Camp Crowder in 1991. Some of you might remember John Jones, who was a scoutmaster of the troop then and they decided to have a campery, a district event here on the property with him and some other scouters. Uh, Gary Smith is one of them that, uh, and I think uh, Professor Rhodes that is maybe retired from here, uh, was active at that time with their children. And they started the first one and we have some patches over there. And you know, how many kids would like to say, you know, I've camped on a military base? Uh, I can, my dad was in the Army for 21 years, and I can act, I've camped at Quantico Marine Corps Base and at Fort Sam Houston, and I can remember these events that you'd have as a kid. So they started the first one in 1991, then uh, in 1998 we had another one out here, and we probably had between eight, nine, maybe a thousand kids camping on the south property down here and had a big event. And then 2013, we had a Cub Scout event. And I have two boys that are involved, and I knew that if we were going to have anything to do with Cub Scouts at the time, that I would have to ringlead that. And got with the captain over here and set it up and had the event. And the kids camped out uh, on the property, and they got to go around to different, see different military you know, displays. But one of the biggest things is the uh, Camp Crowder opened up there's a simulator building that is on the south side of the property down here that uh, you go in there and there's a screen. You know, maybe this whole wall right here is, this, is a video screen. And then you go back on that side and you stand up on this riser and they have like 17 different weapons. You know, they're not called guns, they're called weapons. <laughs> and so you're looking at Cub Scouts that are first graders to fifth graders, get to go in there and all of these weapons are training uh, live, or not live, but you know they're actually military weapons that the soldiers would use out in the field. But instead of going through so many shells, it's all through a video screen and computer and air. And so you have this first grader get behind a 50 caliber machine gun, <laughs> and they have the turkeys going across the screen, and they're shooting turkeys. Now that was my youngest at the time. Uh, Daniel back there, he actually got what they called a uh, grenade launcher that looks like an oversized shotgun and he put an actual shell in it and a little magnet in it and the computer would do it. But, uh, and they got to pull the trigger and you know, blow up turkeys. But one of the best things about it was that I was in there at one time and so here's all these parents that are with their kids and they're on the base and they're doing this and the sergeant there says, sir, Please stand back away from the weapons. These are for the kids only. <laughs> uh, and so, so the Boy Scouts have been involved on the property and camping. And to touch base of what you were saying, Cindy, we actually had another one last fall in September 
a campery over here. Uh, I talked to one of Moore Walker's cartoonists in August the last year. Uh, was visiting with him on the phone, you know, very cordial, telling him what we wanted, you know, had an idea. Uh, he drew the patch, did the patchwork for us. But at that time, he says, well, Mr. Mark Walker is out on the golf course. Uh, there in January, whenever he had passed away, we sent a condolence to him. And he said that uh, Mr. Walker had come down with pneumonia and just didn't recover from it, you know. And, but, um, but we sent him a gift package of T-shirts and souvenirs, you know, from our patches. And that's what they like, you know, Boy Scouts like to collect and, and they do. And so we have sent them also. So we have a connection. And with Mr. Smith uh, talking to him, has gotten the troop uh, the rights to use Beetle Bailey on our T-shirts and patch designs, and that's how we're connected. So we like to be Camp Swampy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, now I'd like to welcome to the podium a local historian who um, is the author of Red Hot and Dusty, as well as a lady that I have very much respected throughout my life and my career. And, you know, as a kid, um, her husband taught me in English. I don't know if he ever thought I'd be standing up in front of a group like this, let alone working with him, but um, enjoyed both of them. And so she brings with her a lot of knowledge, and we welcome Miss Kay Hively. Thank you. Uh, boy, this has brought back a lot of memories. Some things that people say, I have, I have ten times more to tell, but I'll stick to my script, okay? <laughs> uh, they asked me, I wrote a book called Red Hot and Dusty, and it was about Camp Crowder, building in the, some of the things that happened here. But at the time, back in the dark ages, I think it was 1983, I was uh, in graduate school, and I had to write a thesis. And as a historian, as a history major, I, of course, wanted some history, but uh, if I had been single, I might have gone to China and written about the Boxer Rebellion, or to Egypt and written about King Tut because I was very, very taken with these stories. But I was married, had a son, so I wasn't going very far. So I looked around the Yosho and decided, what can I write about? And I was happy to do a local story because you get original sources. And so I chose Camp Crowder. In 1983, there were a lot of people in the Yosho who remembered Camp Crowder. They either helped build it, they worked here, they served here, or they just came out here for the dances. <laughs> anyway, everybody was eager to talk about Camp Crowder. So I looked at my usual sources, some books and stuff, magazines, and I found out that Camp Crowder had a daily newspaper. It's called the Camp Crowder Message. So I found out you, I could buy a copy. So I bought these, these papers on three rolls of microfilm. You can't do that now, because I'd love to have another copy. But they had paper every day. And I read about all the ball teams, and, and who was coming in, and who was going out, and where the train schedules were. It was just a newspaper. And I used those sources. And then I interviewed people, people in town who had had some affiliation here. And I found that as I interviewed these people to a, to a person, when I got done with the interview, they said, you know, when you get this done, I like to read it. So I usually wrote their names down. I got quite a long list. So finally, I got my book, my thesis written. And I thought, now, how am I going to take care of all these people who want to read it? Because I'm not going to make 400 copies. So I decided to turn the thesis into a book. So I turned my paper in it, Pittsburgh State, and then I went to work on the book. First thing I had to decide, I had already had the script written, I mean I had the text written. I had to decide on the things like the cover. So I decided, well I want a military looking cover. So I chose Army Brass, it's kind of gold. Then I thought about well, what illustration do I want on it? But I knew then, of course I'd read about Mort Walker in my research. So I contacted Mr. Walker, and he agreed to do the cover. And I had a lot of nice conversations with him, and he, he did this cover, which ran on my book. Uh, 
Some of my favorite characters are on this cover. Anyway, uh, I got the book published. I published it at Cassville at Little, Little Printers. And I thought, I'll either give the books away to people who ask for them, or I'll sell some, make some money, make my cover cost back. But it sold like hotcakes. Uh, I thank Mr. Walker for part of that. But I covered my cost and covered my trips to Pittsburgh. And it's been a good thing. I still, to this day, get someone wanting one because their grandpa served here and they heard about it. Used to, sometimes I'd get several orders the whole the same week. Maybe from all over the country. And I couldn't figure out why they were clustered like that. Finally, I figured out people were having reunions of their outfit. And somebody brought a copy, and everybody wanted one. So when they got home, they wrote and got one. So I'd get, I'd get a bunch of them one time. And uh, uh, I should uh, not, not get off, but I'm going to tell you this one story. <laughs> one day, uh, Phone ring. And I answered and he said, this, I said, I'm looking for Kay Heisley. I said, You found her? He said, My name is Russ Meyer and I live in Hollywood. I said, Well, how are you, Mr. Meyer? And uh, he said, Do you know who I am? I said, No, I don't. He said, Well, I served at Camp Crowder and we're going to have a reunion and we'd like to come down to Neo Show and have our reunion. So I said, That'd be great. He said, I saw a copy of your book. So I helped make the arrangements. I got motel rooms, got buses to take them around. And these men came in the droves, this huge bunch. And they brought men and their wives. And uh, I went on the bus tour with them, toured the whole campus. It was a lot more open then. And every, this Russ Meyer, everybody just seemed to cling around him. He was, he was energetic and just a magnet. So I was sitting with this, this old soldier in the, on the bus bench, and I said, what's Mr. Meyer do? He looked at me very funny. He said, he's a film producer in Hollywood. I said, oh, what kind of films? <laughs> Art films? <laughs> he was the most famous pornography filmmaker <laughs> in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I was so shocked. <laughs> But I already learned to love him. He was, a, he was the kindest guy. He was, you could tell he was wealthy. He had a great big brass, I mean not brass, solid gold bracelet that said Russ on it. And big watches. But, I mean these, these men and women just clung to him. I mean he was very nice to them. He paid all the bills. I mean, I'm not kidding you. He was, he was the greatest guy. I, and he came back several times. And one time, he came back, and he stayed in the motel. And I didn't invite him to our house for breakfast. So my son was home from college. My husband was home. And Russ came over. And we were sitting around the breakfast table. And he looked around, and he said, Kay, I bet you've never had, had breakfast with three Russes before. Because my son's Rusty, my husband's Russell, and Russ Meyer. I said, no, you're right. This is an interesting breakfast. But that's just one thing of the many things that's happened since I wrote this book. It has been one of the great joys of my life because many of these people are just, just like you and me. They're farmers who served here. They're, they didn't want to go off to war. And they came back. A lot of them come back and see me. But there's been so many interesting people. And Camp Crowder was so important to this town. The, the town changed when Camp Crowder came. It was just a little sleepy Ozark village, and suddenly the world was upon it. At one time, it averaged 40,000 men a year. Some 300,000 men went through here, and most of them knew they were going away, and many of them probably didn't think they'd ever come back. But there are many famous people here, I know all the ones in Hollywood now because uh, <laughs> this was a Signal Corps camp. They learned to use cameras. Most of them were cameramen. And Russ Meyer, that's how he started out as a young cameraman. But it's been a wonderful ride. And I, you know, I don't want to degrade Mr. <laughs> Walker, but Ted Key was here also, the creator of Hazel, the cartoon Hazel. So I had a lot of talent here. They put on a lot of shows. 
In fact, the name of the book, Red Hot and Dusty, was a, was a camp show that the men wrote and performed in themselves. The men dressed as women for the women's parts. The title of this uh, play they put on was Red Hot and Dusty. So I think my time is up. I could talk all day, but I won't. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Well, we appreciate that, Kay. Thank you for all the, all the insight and history that you have. At this time, Mr. Zromsky and I are going to walk over to Robin Wolven. Robin is our, um, oversees the rare books collection in the library. And we have purchased some books that will actually be in the library in the rare books collection. And so we want to just bear with us a minute. We want to do a little ribbon cutting just to dedicate those books today, which is now called the Herb and Barbara Shoddy Rare Books Collection, thanks to um, the generosity over the years of the shoddy. So we'll hold the ribbon and let Robin cut it if you all bear with us just a minute. All right. So on behalf of the Crowder College Library, we um, will dedicate these books to the Rare Books Collection, and thank you, Robin, for cutting the ribbon. Robin will be over here in a little bit, as well as everybody else at their tables to um, talk about it. So if you have questions, feel free to come over. And we would be remiss if at the end of this ceremony, we didn't take a moment of silence to pay tribute to Mr. Walker for all the things he's done for Camp Crowder, Camp Swampy, and Crowder College. So if you all bear with me just a minute, take a moment of silence, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. All right, today, April 12th, 76 years of the dedication of Camp Crowder, as well as um, all the things we have set up that have happened from that 76 years ago to today. Please feel free to, to um, browse the area. We did have a few snacks today. Those snacks, we tried to do snacks that Beetle Bailey liked. And I found out that those were cheeseburgers, chips, and stuff that Sarge liked, I guess. <laughs> cheeseburgers and chips and things like that. But we did find cookies. And then we did do some trail mix for the Mort Walker Trail. So feel free to grab some snacks and look around. And thank you all for coming. <laughs>